welcome back to the GC channel. I'm your host, Orlando Caceres, the president and founder of First Law International. If you're new with us, welcome. This is a channel especially for you, for the GCs and for in-house legal teams, and is powered by general counsels. We'll be covering today some of the trendiest topics, things that keep you up at night, and we hope that you will find the next few minutes invaluable and very insightful. So follow us along. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the GC channel. This is the place where in-house legal teams and general counsels come together to talk about trends and matters of interest that keep us all up at night. I'll be your host today. My name is Orlando Caceres. I'm the founder and CEO of First Law International. We are a global network based in the seat of the EU here in Brussels, Belgium. Uh, with me today, my guest is Mr. Chad Turner. Chad Turner is no stranger to FLI. We've known each other for years, and he's a regular um, guest at our virtual events now under, under COVID since we can't meet together. Uh, Chad is uh, currently a uh, legal counsel for the Global Fund. And prior to that position, he was the VP and general counsel of Vital Strategies. And I'll ask him to tell us a little bit about that. But uh, to say the least, uh, people that are watching uh, Chad's career will agree that uh, migrating from New York uh, Vital Strategies to, uh, to Geneva Switzerland as a member of a multi, multi-billion dollar fund is a step up in his career. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Chad uh, to the program. So Chad, how are you? Thank you, Orlando. I, I'm very happy to be here. I'm doing very well today. I'm excited to talk about my experiences and some of my thoughts about law and being an in-house lawyer. Wonderful. Well, let us uh, kick it off with um, the the amazing work that the Global Fund does. You know, it's uh, interestingly, as we were researching your um, profile uh, in, in more detail, we, we came across uh, information that makes anybody, even your critics, uh, completely fall in love with the kind of work that you guys do. The Global Fund, uh, when you think about it, it's only 20 years old. And in 20 years, um, you have been working on initiatives that uh, pale by comparison to anybody else uh, in the in-house uh, world. I mean, the, the whole notion that um, I found it, um, I've never heard of that, but I found it very, um, very insightful and very amazing that the, the three primary diseases that your, your fundamental mission is dedicated not only are treatable, but they're preventable if caught on uh, early days. So let's start with that. I mean, tell us a little bit about the Global Fund. How does it work? And where do you get all those billions and what do you do with them? Those are excellent questions. The Global Fund is an international organization. As we've talked about, it's headquartered here in Geneva. And the full name of the Global Fund is the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria. And as you said, we believe that those three diseases, not only are they preventable diseases, but they're diseases that can be eradicated. And that's ultimately the goal of the Global Fund, is to see the death and the quick death, hopefully, of those three diseases, that they are eradicated and gone. Uh, the Global Fund is an organization that sits somewhere between um, the World Bank and the United Nations or the World Health Organization. We're, we are not uh, a true implementer, nor however, however are we just a loaner of funds. And so the funding that the Global Fund re receives comes from donor countries, from governments. Uh, the United States is our largest donor and then a number of other countries in the European Union and elsewhere donate funds to the Global Fund as well as private philanthropic foundations. And we have some work that we do with the private sector as well. So there are a lot of different actors and entities that are involved in contributing to the Global Fund. That money is then given to countries in the form of grants. And this is, these grants, we call them investments. We truly believe that they are investments in public health towards the eradication of those three diseases. And so the money comes into the Global Fund 
and is then distributed through grants to these various countries, many of them in Africa, but there are countries all over the world that receive global fund money. About $4 billion a year is dispersed towards the eradication of, of AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. And you mentioned our, our short history. We've only been in existence for about 20 years. Um, Kofi Annan was actually the, the first person to write a check and the first donor to the Global Fund. It, this was in large part his idea. And it has seen remarkable success in that 20 year period in the fight against those three diseases. Now, I'll also just quickly mention as well that um, the past year and a half as COVID has entered the landscape has brought up some interesting questions for the Global Fund about our work. And we are involved heavily in the COVID-19 response. We work alongside other partners such as Gavi and the UN, WHO, that are handling COVAX and other forms of response. But we have dispersed over a billion dollars already in COVID-19 response funding and more funding is, is, has become available recently and we will continue that response effort because we believe that in order to eradicate the diseases of AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria, we also can't ignore COVID. And so though that money that we are receiving from donors is being put to good use and we are confident will help both eradicate COVID-19 as a pandemic, but also help with these other pandemic-like diseases that we've been focused on for the past 20 years. You know, I think that the audience, uh, our GCs around the world are going to be sitting here with a grin thinking, yeah, yeah, Chad, you know, you're you're sitting in Geneva, you know, uh, you got billions at your disposal, you got all the resources in the world. And I definitely want to get to some of the responsibilities that because I know that you have a lot of uh, a lot of weight on your shoulders. But, you know, I think to the to the critics out there um, when they when they realize that, as you said, it was Kofi Annan. Uh, to his credit, uh, during the African Union Summit exactly 20 years ago in the spring of uh, 2001, uh, when this thing was was concocted, uh, I'm sure the critics and the cynics, uh, they thought, never, this is never going to take off. And, and here you are uh, 20 years later, um, and, and you are really making a huge dent. But it's not just the three diseases that you mentioned. Um, I, I think it's remarkable that as part of the charter is the eradication of poverty, hunger, good health and well-being, quality of education, clean water, sanitation. And the next one is so relevant in our time is gender equality. What do you, what do you think about those? I mean, some people will say, that's just impossible. How can we get these things done? Billions aside, what do you say to those GCs? So I think that there's there's impossible and being willing to change and do something and impossible and deciding that because it's impossible, you're not going to do anything. Um, I, I honestly don't think our mission or our objectives are impossible. Some may, but we have seen things that we thought were impossible just in our own lifetimes be achieved. So I, I am very cautious to ever say that anything is impossible. Now, as hard as it may be to achieve the objectives that the Global Fund has set out, they're very logical. The eradication of disease cannot happen while there is inequality, poverty, gender violence, discrimination. If you want to, to truly have positive public health outcomes, you also have to have a positive society and you have to have the, the framework, um, both legally, but also communally, that will allow for good public health infrastructure and good public health systems. Now, the Global Fund recognizes that that's important and that is why that is part of our mission. And again, it's not easy. Um, I, I see on a daily basis the challenges that come with trying to uphold a mission that is, that is quite difficult. But I also see the successes that we are having and the impact that we are making. And more importantly, the impact that individuals around the world at their own level are making. And these, these things, they may seem at first glance not to be connected, 
But for every individual that's lifted out of poverty, for every woman who has the same opportunities as a man in her country, public health improves. And the eradication of those three diseases comes one step closer to being fulfilled. Well, thank you for watching. If you would like to see more videos like this one, subscribe to the channel and press the notification button below so that you will be alerted when new videos come out. We hope that you've enjoyed it and we look forward to the next one. And don't forget, you heard it here first.